Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. This is Aman here and I am a data scientist. In this particular video, we will try to understand another boosting technique known as gradient boost. So in my last video, the link for which you can see here, I was talking about ADA boost. So ADA boost is another boosting algorithm and gradient boost is the next boosting algorithm that I am going to discuss. So basically I want to make you understand what are the differences between ADA boost and gradient boost. Okay. So ADA boost and gradient boost now if you have seen my last video on ada boost you would know that in ada boost algorithm lot of machine learning models are trained one by one and then the final model is created so how that happens is in ada boost the weights of the records the weights of records get updated right so what happens in ada boost is all the misclassified records so all the records which a particular model could not perform well or could not predict well their weights are increased which means more weightage are given to those records for the next model so if model one misclassifies some of the records or model one is not able to you know correctly predict some values or the error is high then those records will be given more weightage in the next model iteration and this continues so final model is model 1 plus model 2 plus model 3 so this is how ADA boost works so all boosting algorithm work on combining multiple models here also in gradient boost also multiple models will be combined so what is the difference the difference is here the learning happens by adding the weights right so as I told learning happens by changing the weights but in gradient boost learning happens by optimizing the loss function optimizing the loss okay so what is this loss i'll talk about this in a moment before that the another difference between ada boost and gradient boost is in ada boost the trees normally the trees which are built are basically stumps which means trees are not grown fully or trees are not grown below a limit so trees normally look like this one root and two leaves okay whereas in gradient boost the trees are normally leaf nodes so here there are only two leaf nodes whereas in gradient boost the leaf nodes will be normally the range of leaf nodes is between 8 to 32 which means the trees are bigger in size in gradient boost so guys two differences between ada boost and gradient boost number one ADA boost learning happens or you know the boosting happens by adjusting these weights of the records misclassified records on the other hand in gradient boost the learning or you know ensembling happens by optimizing the loss now let me talk a bit about what is loss if you guys remember how linear regression works using OLS method ordinary least square method then you will be able to recollect that in linear regression if this is y axis and this is my x axis if these are my data points and this is my regression line then the errors of this regression model are these distances distance between actual values and predicted values right and we call these errors as e1 e2 like this so how ordinary least square method or ols method works is by optimizing these errors so what is the meaning of that the ordinary square method tries to optimize e1 square plus e2 square plus up to en square why we are squaring this is because some of these can be negative and some of these can be positive so we can make this equation generic with a summation we can say i is equal to 1 to n and ei square so how OLS will work is ordinary squared in linear regression it will try to bring this value as close to zero as possible and this process is called optimization of loss function now what is loss function this becomes the loss function for this particular model okay and this process is called optimization of loss now why this is important is the same concept is being used in gradient boost as well let's try understanding how is that okay so I'll take a very simple data here and try to make you understand how gradient boost works. Okay, just pay attention guys gradient boost is something 
which is not very well explained on internet and web okay so just pay attention here so let's say i take the age of a person i take the bmi of a person and let us say from age and bmi i want to calculate the height of the person or i want to learn this pattern okay now let me put some numbers here 21 22 23 bmi might be 24 might be 26 might be 30 and let us say height might be 174 176 169 something like this okay so let us say in this data these two age and bmi are my independent variables and this is my target variable which means this is a regression problem so we want to learn the pattern how height is dependent on age and bmi okay so this is what we are interested in learning now if we take this data and submit this data to a boosting algorithm so let me walk you through step by step how boosting al algorithm will work so the very fundamental thing in boosting algorithm is it will need two things one is a loss function okay and another is a additive model okay so i'll tell you what are these things in a moment now this is the data so the very first thing the boosting algorithm does is it will try to compute the first residual so what is residual if you remember in linear regression i just discussed residual is the difference between actual value and predicted value in this context we do not have any predicted value so where from the residuals will come so what boosting algorithm does is in step one or you can call it step zero in step one boosting algorithm will just compute the average of the target column this happens if it's a regression use case if it's a classification use case then the concept of odds and probabilities will come okay but here to keep it simple let's try understanding what is the average height of this so we can say 174 plus 176 plus 169 by 3 okay is equal to let's say i'm just putting a dummy number here if it is 171 i'm not sure if this is the right answer let's go with that okay so 171 is the average height of this column now what happens if there is no model no learning in place so boosting algorithm in step one assumes that there is no learning in place or no model which starts with the base model no model at all then what will be the predicted values of this so if i have to add predicted values here then all the predicted values will be 171 whatever we have computed the average here okay this is step number one this is step number two now we have actuals and we have predicted so we can have the residuals okay so what will be residuals here actual minus predicted so this residual will be three what will be residual well this res residual will be five and this residual will be minus two okay now we have residuals in hand okay this is step number one step number two now I am rubbing this off just you can go back and see the data if you want so these are the actuals these are the predicted and these are the residuals okay having said that as a next step what gradient boost will do is gradient booster will fit a model on this particular residual so residual becomes the target column and all the individual columns of the data which I have rubbed off age and BMI those will be there as independent column and this residual becomes the target column and a model is fit on this residual okay so let's call it residual model one now how this residual model will look like is let us say this is decision tree it looks like this and this residual model one is fit on this as residual as target as a next step what will happen is these residuals will be predicted okay using this model okay now using this model we will get the new value of the residuals residual predicted so let us say this model learning happens and then the value predicted for this residual 3 is let's say 3.5 for this residual 5 is let's say 4.2 for this minus 2 is minus 1 i am just putting some dummy numbers here so this model is predicting the value of residuals this now what happens as next step is the prediction 
gets changed which means if you remember this column is just the average of target column in the beginning step 0 here what will happen is this 171 one will change now how it will change is the new prediction the new prediction after first iteration will be 171 plus there is something called learning rate okay so learning rate is the rate at what speed or at what you know shift you want to change the predicted value so this value i am keeping it 0 0.1 for simplicity so it will be 0 0.1 into the residuals difference okay so here what is the new residual computed so this is 3.5 now whatever this output is this becomes the new predicted value okay if you have some confusions let me repeat again step one compute the average of the target column step two if we have the actual and if we have the predicted we call that average as prediction okay so actual predicted we will have a residual fit a model on this residual as target and independent columns as columns of the data we get a model this model predicts the residual now we have the predicted residual now what to do now update the default prediction okay so this default prediction 171 gets updated by the new residual 171 plus learning rate into 3.5 okay so this is how iteration 1 gets completed now we will have new numbers here once we have the new numbers then obviously the residuals will change because we have the actual value and we have the predicted value and then residuals will change and the same process will repeat okay again rm2 will come residual model 2 will come and residual model 2 will update the prediction again so if you see carefully what is being trying to happen here is we are trying to come closer to the actual values so we made some assumption that this is just the average then updating that assumption with the new residual values then further updating that assumption with one more residual values so let me show you how the final model will look like so this is how the final prediction will look like final prediction will be base value which in our case is the average value so let's say that value is 171 plus learning rate into first residual prediction by residual model one okay so first residual prediction by residual model one in our record one was 3.5 and this learning rate is 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 into 3.5 plus learning rate into second residual prediction by residual model 2 so if residual model 2 gives the prediction as 3.2 then 0 0.1 into 3.2 and this will keep on continuing till how many ever trees we want to grow in the boosting model so if we grow 100 trees then 100 of these will come these terms and finally the prediction happens okay so i hope you have understood this boosting algorithm now gradient boost is a is a topic which is as i told in the beginning not very well explained on the web if you have any doubts any questions just don't hesitate to drop me a comment i'll definitely respond to you and understanding this is very important guys because if you write these algorithms in your resume and go for interview people will grill you on you know these details what is a learning rate what is base value what is first residual model how the boosting happens these kind of things they'll ask you hence i want you to be very confident and clear on these fundas okay so how did you like this video let me know through likes and comments i'll see you all in the next video with practical of this till then take care